Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Python for Finance tutorial series. This is going to be a bit of a longer one, but I think it's going to be probably the most fun that I've made so far because we're going to see how we can use a moving average to trade and when helps us, when should we use or when should we not use it. Now there are many videos out there that I've seen and they're quite good, except none of them provides so what is the result. Is this better than just buying the company uh, stock and holding it for the period? or not so that's something that we would have as an end goal to to figure out is this something that makes sense to use or not so what we're going to do first is we're going to start with simple moving average let's see how that works let's see the information that it provides and then build up from there in order to do that we need some data to work with um, in the previous tutorials we saw how to get the data but we used a bit less than a year now we're going to use a period of a bit over five years so as of 2015 and the ticker that we're going to use for now it would be let's use apple and then later on we're going to test for a lot more so i'm going to get rid of this part for now and basically our data would be equal to the data that we get from yahoo finance for our ticker now once we have the data, we want to create our simple moving average. Our simple moving average would be for 20 days, which is about a month, and for 120 days, which is about half a year. How do we create a simple moving average? Well, if we take our adjusted close and apply a rolling 20 dot mean, basically just creates a so-called rolling mean. And we're going to use the exact same for 120. Now, why is this something that, let's say people um, think that it works. What's the logic behind it? Let's plot it to our price chart. So ax1.plot data SMA. So the simple moving average 20, label SMA 20. And let's do the same for 120. Our title would be equal now to just, let's use ticker. And on our label, we would have year and then month. We don't need the days. Uh, I use capital Y in this case because it will show the entire year. So it would be 2020 instead of just 20. And this would be year month. So let's see, let's see the logic behind the moving average. Now we created two separate ones. One is the 20 days and the one is the 120. Now, the, the one related to the last 20 days is called a fast moving average because it's closer to the, to the present. And it would be much, um, much closer to the actual price compared to the 120 one, which would be uh, lagging behind. But the logic is that once the, the 20, the SMA 20 is above the SMA 120, that's the point when we need to buy because there is some trend in the in the recent history that the price is going up. So if you take a look at this, our buy position would be in all these cases where our SMA 20 is above the SMA 120. And then once it goes below, well, that's the point where we're not going to hold um, any investment into this stock. Now let's test this and let's see what is the return if we use this compared to if we just bought at the very beginning and hold it until the very end. Now in order to do that, we need to calculate the change of the price. And in order to calculate the change, we need to know, well, what is the price today? What was it yesterday? The difference is the change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create price underscore yesterday, which would be equal to price adjusted close dot sh uh, data adjusted close dot shift one so the adjusted close would just move a uh, row below um, so you would see that the price of yesterday is on the row of the price today so we can just in the same row um, perform this calculation but before that i'm also going to drop some columns. If you have sometimes a data set that has a lot of columns, you can just use um, drop and specify the columns that you want to drop. In this case, we want to drop high, low, 
open and close so we're not going to use them for now so I'll just I'll just drop them and let's print the head of our data set I'm going to comment this part out we're not going to use the, the matplotlib library here to plot maybe later on actually for sure later on but for now let's just see that it works so the price of let's say 2nd of January was 24.941 well as you can see the the next day trading day is actually we have that as price of yesterday so if we subtract the two we get the change in absolute value if we subtract and then divide with the price of yesterday we get the the, the relative increase now since we're going to um, calculate this change over time we're going to want we would like to multiply these changes over time so I'm not going to use the the, the widely used formula to just uh, subtract these two and then divide with the price of yesterday I'll just use adjusted close divided by the price of yesterday so we get that one included in our formula already so our change so for today would be equal to adjusted close divided by data price of yesterday so now we know how much the price has changed now what we need to do is we know these moving averages so the simple moving averages we need to figure out when this moving average of 20 was above the moving average of 120 and when that's the case we would have invested if not well we will not have invested now I want to also show um, creating different data frames and filtering data frames so I'm going to do a combination of in this tutorial of both first let's create our invested SMA what this means is we would have one if the moving average of 20 is above 120 or zero if that's not the case so if it's one we've invested if it's zero we have not invested um, the formula for that that I'm going to use is basically um, I'll just set one if data dot lock I SMA 20 is greater than data dot lock I SMA SMA 120 else zero for I in data dot index I'll just make this a bit wider so basically if the SMA 20 for every I in the data of uh, data dot index so for every row if the 20 is greater than the 120 I'll have one in this invested SMA if that's not the case then it would be zero now what we want to do is we want to uh, identify these ones and that's the only thing that we're interested in when it comes to these SMAs because in those rows we have the change that is relevant for our calculation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate data frame and that would be equal to data but when data invested underscore SMA is equal equal to one so this data set related to the simple moving average is the same as the first one that we have except it only contains those rows when we have invested because of the strategy so now we can calculate the returns so SMA return and for that we're going to import numpy as np so the return um, would be equal to np dot cumulative product of SMA change so the change that we've calculated which is the change for the day well we still have it here except it's not all the changes for the entire history it's just for the time where we had invested which is actually what we need so this would be our return using the strategy let's see what would be our return if we had buy and hold well in that case we would have the cumulative product of data change actually this is the change for the entire period except we have we, we can plot it easier because we have it every day we can just 
take the, the last price divided by the first price and that's our entire change for the entire period but we can't graph it because it would be just one value so now that we have that we can create a graph and compare these two to see how it works over time now i'm going to uncomment this part here and we have two plots at the moment so one is for the price and the moving averages one is for the volume let's create a third one so ax3 would be equal to plt dot subplot to grid um let's make it 10 on one 10 by one so 10 rows one column and this one would start uh row eight row span would be equal to two call span one share x would be the same so it would be sharing the same axis um as, as the other two so then ax3 so ax3 uh, we're going to use a line plot because it, we want to see how it changes over time um what we're going to plot is from our data we have to buy and hold and the label would be equal to well we can just say buy and hold so that is what we're going to plot then on the same plot we're going to plot this SMA return and the label would be equal to SMA so that is that should be fine that should be fine um this label now we're going to add it to ax3 and we're also going to add the legend so what we've done is if i summarize it we know how much it has changed the price has changed every day we have that as percentage we know um when have we invested so using this strategy using that information we've calculated the change over time so we multiply that change because it's, it's compounding as well as we know the result using the buy and hold strategy so now if i run this we should have a third plot below the price and volume that would show us how well this strategy performed compared to the buy and hold unless we run into an error which we need to figure out afterwards now this warning is fine all right so i it's loading on my other screen so um as you can see let me just drag it quickly on the other side as you can see the buy and hold strategy outperforms our simple moving every strategy so and also again this does not take into account any transaction costs it's just simple exercise a simple backtesting so we have the year we we can see we can see that at at, at some point um it was kind of the same so we have the same result but as of somewhere between 16 and 17 the buy and hold seemed to out outperform again using the simple moving average and it's only for one company which well i'd say i'd argue it's not a, a large enough sample so let's see how the exponential moving average compares to this and then let's see how what are the results from more than one company now the exponential one basically what we did so far it's something similar that we're going to do for the exponential one because here we have the simple moving average now we're going to have ewm so exponential weighted moving average and we need to specify the number of days now if you take a look into the articles and the, the, the let's say the what's being recommended is being using 12 and 26 days so the 12 it would be a bit over um two weeks and this would be about a bit over a month now let's let's do that uh, this is something that you can change you can play with maybe maybe this simple moving average of 10 and and 50 days works better um, you have to test it for a lot more but again um, this is not an investment advice but I would not base my investment or trading solely on this indicator this is not a again a, an indicator that shows this is what you need to invest in but it's more of a when you should invest it if you're confident that that asset is is a good one so because some often there are reasons why the price goes down um, 
And in that case, even though the indicator says, yeah, it's a good opportunity, if you know that the asset itself is going bankrupt, well, don't do it. Um, so in this case, what we would do is we would still take the adjusted close, except instead of using rolling mean, we would use dot EWM. The span would be equal to 12 and uh, adjust would be equal to false. That's related to the to the weighting part, but if you want to, to learn more about that, I can leave a link into the description. Um, this is for the 26, oh, not me. So now we have the exponential one. Um, and what we need to do is something similar that we did here for the invested yes or no, or one or zero. Except this one would be for the E, W M and it would be one if the E W M of 12 days is greater than the E W M of 26. And now I'm going to create again a different E W M data frame, which would be equal to data when invested E W M is equal equal to one. And same as before, the return would be equal to NP dot cumulative product of EWM change. So whatever is left with all the rows that are left when we've invested, that's the product that we're looking for. And we're also going to plot EWM return at a label that it's EWM strategy. And now let's see. So this is a, a, a third strategy. So we have the buy and hold, we have the simple moving average and we have the exponentially weighted moving average. So we have a period of a bit over five years. We have only one company that we've tested it for. And as you can see, the, the exponential one outperforms the buy and hold, at least for this company. So it's just for one company um, and for a period of five years. So um, it's difficult. I, I would not encourage anyone to make decisions or, or conclusions based on such a small data set. Um, it might be that it's working, it might be that it's not, and also the transaction costs are nowhere taken into account. So I'm not sure, maybe there's just five trades uh, during these five years, maybe it's it's a lot more. Um, if you zoom in, in 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 these, let me just zoom in the entire, but if you zoom in um, into specific parts, Let's see where the difference becomes larger between the, the, the exponential uh, weighted moving average and the buy and hold. So this part seems to increase the gap. So let's let's or let's use this part. And let's see what has happened. So as you can see, uh, it's quite a straight line. So this is an entire period where we did we would not have invested if we've used this indicator. Um, however, if you take a look at a simple moving average, there is a lag between. So it starts not invest or it stops investing a bit later on compared to the, the exponential one. While the buy and hold we would have hold and uh, our return would have would have decreased because if you take a look at the price here. Uh, it's quite um, clear that maybe we need to also plot here the the exponential one just so we can see that. Let's also do that. So we have the EWM 12 and EWM 26. Maybe it's just good to see where Although there would be quite a lot of lines, but it would we should be able to see that we get an earlier signal using this exponential compared to the to the simple moving average, and it makes sense because it's just a completely different approach that is being used. But uh, since it's a tutorial, I think it's very good that we go into as much detail as possible, and that we can see. All right, so this is why um, this strategy provides better indicator compared to the other one. So again, I'm going to zoom into the same period and hopefully we'll be able to see. So the 12th and um, 26, the point when they cut is here. So this is the point when the indicator says, all right, now you need to stop 
investing in this uh, company, which is quite well compared to the timing when it starts, the price starts decreasing. On the other side, the small, the simple moving average gives that signal around here, which is about, about a month later or even more. So that's that um, timing provides the entire difference when it comes to the two strategies. Now, how we would use this and what would be the outcome if we try to to test this on more than, than just one stock. So what I'm going to do is um, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just use five tickers. You can use as many, you can use all of the S&P 500. Um, the tickers would be Apple, let's say Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Tesla, uh, let's say Amazon. So that's, that's enough. For every ticker in tickers, what we're going to do is we're going to perform what we've just done, except for the plotting part. So we are going to ignore this for now. We don't want to plot um, the moving averages. We don't want to plot the world. Instead, what we want is we want, uh, let's just do a simple text. Just, just simple. Uh, you can also create tables later on, but let's just do like this. Buy and hold strategy return would be equal to, um, let's say data. I think this is what we're looking for is this data buy and hold. Buy and hold. Uh, and then minus one. So the, the last row, whatever is the last date, that's our return for the entire period. And we need to make sure this is a string. So we don't get an error there. And basically what we're going to do is, we're going to print the same for SMA. So for the simple moving average return and EWM return. And the, the change would be here, it would be SMA return and EWM return. So now we should have for every ticker, so it should start with Apple. This is the, the buy and hold strategy. This is the, the return of that strategy, the simple moving average and the exponentially weighted moving average. And let's just see, hopefully it works. Let me see if I So again, it's for 2015. So it's for a bit of more than five years, almost close to six years, but it's um, all right. At this warning, we can ignore for now, but um, you can also save these results into a, a table, some sort of table. So let's see. Oh, maybe it's uh, what we're missing is actually printing the ticker. So we need, want to know what those results or which, to which company are they related to. So let's see, that would be much better. So let's see, Apple, this is what we've just plotted, All right? So five companies, Apple, what we saw is that this EWM um, return is about 700% compared to a bit below 500 if the buy and hold strategy compared to less than 300% using the SMA return. We can also do this multiplied by 100 and then with maybe two decimals. So we have 708 or maybe one decimal 0.6%. Actually, that's something that you can do. I, that should be quite easy. So I'll just use the round formula. Using Coca-Cola, uh, the buy and hold, it's quite similar to the EWM. So probably the buy and hold would have been better taking the transaction cost into account in this case. Uh, Microsoft buy and hold is better. Tesla. Oh, well, since this is more volatile, it makes more sense that, that here it, this one works better. But again, maybe there are so many trades happening that uh, this is, but uh, it's probably, it would have probably yielded better results compared to the buy and hold because it's, it's by 500 the difference is 953 to 1400. So it's, it's quite a large difference. Um, Amazon, yeah, this is a close one between the buy and hold and the, the exponential one. So so the simple moving average, it's quite clear that it's, it's lagging with the results, at least using these five examples. 
Uh, the exponential one might be something that's worth looking at, but again, I would not uh, trade without knowing the company and what, what, what it does and whether it's, it's worth investing in. If I have only this information without the ticker, I would not invest. It doesn't matter which company it is. Uh, if you take a look at Wirecard, which you, it just there was a huge scandal uh, recently. Uh, of course, it depends when you're watching this video, but recently, um, it was in 2020, uh, all the signals would say, oh, you need to buy this company because, but it went, it crashed completely. So that doesn't mean that you should buy it just because this indicator tells you to. It's, it's, it's more of an indicator of, when to buy and not whether to buy and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as i said it's probably a bit longer than the ones before but um it's it's good to see not just how this works but also the results so you can test it for more companies you can test it for a longer period of time you can post, test it for a shorter period of time although since the moving averages take 26 or so about a month you need at least i'd say two months of data um to sh to show at least one trade but uh, you probably need a lot more than that um and you might play with different days so you might do all right so what are the different impacts um of the of the days of the trading days that i choose on all s p 500 in the last 10 years um just play with it um if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comment section below if you're not subscribed and you like these videos, feel free to subscribe and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.